Characha. Hello again everyone. Well, today's the big day. We're gonna take an angle grinder to this baby. I know that's what everyone wants to see, uh, so I'm gonna be brief, but just for those following the build in full, uh, I just wanted to point out a couple of things quickly. First of all, it would be more usual to carve the top of the cap once it's actually already attached to the back of the guitar. In this case, I don't want to do that because I actually want to carve a cavity on the inside of the cap also. Um, also at this point, before carving, one could opt to drill the holes for the controls. I've decided not to do that in this instance because I want to drill the holes parallel, parallel, perpendicular to the actual carved top rather than straight down into the guitar as well. So for those reasons I've decided to give the carving a go before it's glued on. Do bear in mind that I haven't actually done a final sand on the bobbin sander around the outside of the cap yet. So the edge is going to be shaped anyway. The only thing I suppose I've got to bear in mind there is that if I did want to do the traditional lip style carve on the edge of the germ on the edge of the German carve it's not right. On the edge of the PRS then I'd have to bear that in mind when it comes to you know the sanding and everything. In reality I think I'm actually steering more towards just actually going straight off the edge at least on the back side of the guitar. I'm pretty much just going to play it by ear to be honest. What could possibly go wrong? Another couple of things to explain first. Um, a lot of the guys with more experience than I were screaming at me saying, you don't need to carve your F-holes perfectly right now. It's gonna be much easier after you've thinned out the top. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to give myself a little height mark around the edge. I meant to do that with pencil before I screwed this on actually, but I'll do it with masking tape probably. And then that'll just give me something to gauge how deep I'm going on the cap. And I'm just going to quickly mark out both the horn points and also the area that's going to remain relatively flat on the top. On a PRS, unlike some Les Pauls, um, this area is fairly flat. Um, with Les Pauls it often curves right the way up to, up to the centre line. Um, the other thing was as well, normally it would be a good idea if the cap was glued on to route out the pickup holes first. Uh, again, there's no perfect way of doing it, but in this instance I'm going to carve first and then do the pickup holes afterwards. Um, the pickup routes actually, I will need some form of template fixed down to be able to do those, but because this area is going to remain relatively flat, flat there should be enough free space to glue something down to allow me to carve those templates. Anyway, let's do it. Well, we've got some guidelines there just to help me with visualization. I'm aiming not really to come inside this innermost line. I'm going to start off by sweeping the outside edges down the horns there. Uh, the bottom is pretty much going to be try and bring that away in a steady gradient. Um, I'm going to cut the inside of this horn. The inside of this horn I won't do right now because that will actually cut into the into the back of the guitar as well, so it needs to be glued in place before I do that.
On the home stretch now with the angle grinder I've just clamped the guitar hanging off the edge of the bench there so I can get better access to the horns. So there we have it, that's not finished, as you can probably tell it's a little bit consistent in the depth right at the very edge, it's quite quite smooth but it does vary in thickness. What I probably should have done if I was worried about that would be to route around the edge to a given depth to create a little step to carve to, but I wasn't really that bothered about that on this occasion. Um, there will be more to take off. I don't know if you can tell, I've tried to keep away from a straight up PRS copy in terms of the carve shape. I'm actually trying to go for more of a convex kind of 335 shape more than anything else. But I've just measured there with a, a ruler and the full binding if you like goes from about 7mm depth which apparently is about typical for Les Paul right the way up to 10 I think I want to take all of that down to, to a fairly thin about 5mm um, so that's what I'll probably be doing next time but I am running out of time for today got other things to do I'm afraid you can see it looks a little bit rough around there where I've been using the tip to get into those tight curves but that's actually okay that'll sand out by hand or with the random orbital no problem whatsoever once we do get that down to a nice consistent depth and we're happy with the outer carve I will actually be dishing the insides to thin it down even further um, but as I say I'm gonna have to leave it there for today so I'll come back another day we'll keep it all as one video so that will keep the entire carving process or at least most of it in one video So I'm pretty happy with the carving that we've done so far. I've had it pointed out to me that I've left quite a lot of material on so far. Um, that's probably partly due to apprehension, but also because I'm going for more of a kind of a convex shape rather than a traditional kind of concave shape around the edges, which basically means I'm taking off a hell of a lot less material. Now I do need to take off some more anyway to get the edges all down to the same level. I'm told normally on a Les Paul or something like that the binding would be about somewhere in the region about 7mm. Um, I'm actually going to take mine right the way down to about 5mm just in an attempt to take a little bit more off but I am thoroughly expecting that if I want to maintain this kind of concave shape on the top I'm probably going to have to remove a hell of a lot of material from the back side of the cap just to thin it out. Um, so we'll crack on with that and we'll see how we go.
So we lost the camera at the heat again there pretty early on I'm afraid. I've completed making the second pass with the angle grinder. Um, it was a little bit more of a rush job this time because I'm not feeling particularly well but hopefully hopefully you can see that I've thinned it down considerably. It's still got that kind of convex shape to it so it's still way thicker than it needs to be in the middle. Um, I've just taken a piece of rough sandpaper and taken it round over the top there just to smooth it out a little bit. It is a little bit more lumpy bumpy than my first attempt was. Um, I'm a little bit dubious about trying to smooth that out using the angle grinder because of the fact we're getting down to sort of the margins where if I do make a slip there's not much material left to be able to compensate. So I think I'll probably finish that off with hand tools and with sandpaper and things. Uh, do bear in mind I do need to take the bobbin sander I say the bobbin sander, I don't own a bobbin sander, but I need to sand around the edge of this yet before I finalise the the bevels on the edges of the top of the guitar and all that kind of thing. Um, but what I want to do, because I'm going to have to undergo the epic task of cleaning up all this sawdust in a moment, uh, is finish off with the grinder. And the other thing that I need to do is carve out the inside of this. As you can hopefully see there, if I just hold the camera pointing into the F-holes, you can see that they're still pretty much the full thickness of the body. I really want to get those down to sort of the same kind of margin as the outer binding, so about half a centimetre. So I'm going to have to do that from the inside. So what I've done here is taken the cap and actually screw screwed it on the wrong way around, just as a base to really weight it down while I'm working on it. What I'm trying to achieve here is to basically dish out this entire area here on both sides without straying into the bits which are actually going to make contact for gluing. The ideal tool for this in my opinion, and it is just a guess, would probably be some nice sharp spoon shaped gouges. However, I don't have any sharp gouges. Um, I did have some gouges that I bought and tried to sharpen but they were just cheap ones and to be honest with you they just didn't seem up to the job of cutting into hard wood. So I'm kind of willing to waste what's left of this flapper disc to see what material we can remove with the angle grinder.
So there we have it. I've dished out the insides as best I can. Um, obviously the angle grinder is not the most accurate tool so trying to get a uniform thickness along there is actually quite difficult. But it's done a pretty good and pretty speedy job. Certainly a lot better than it would be if I tried to sit here with a blunt gouge all day. Uh, from the top you can see still a little bit lumpy in places but it's definitely the right overall shape. The task next time is definitely going to be to use the files to just hone that shape and get it all nice and neat in terms of the actual shape of the F hole and then once we've got the actual profile shape I'll probably take some rough sandpaper and my thumb and actually just work on thicknessing around those holes uh, to get them just as uniform as I can. It's not going to be too bad for a few mil off from hole to hole but if you've got sort of like on these straight lines uh, you know say if it's like three four mil here and then it's only two mil here then it's going to look a little bit dodgy so I want to try and get that as neat as I can. I did have one little slip up at the end actually which is typical it was honestly right in the last sort of five seconds of me working on this all day and that is on this hole here I sort of slipped and carved this really quite too deep so if I actually look I'll zoom in there if I look at the very edge of this sand hole you can see it's actually very thin it's probably quite thin even for a proper hollow body um, I might actually try and just build that up with a little bit of filler and um, just to give me a little bit of extra something to work with but I'm confident that when all said and done it really shouldn't be too much of a problem so yep yeah, not perfect by any means but for a first attempt that's pretty damn good uh, the top is feeling pretty light now which is reassuring once the pickup holes come out there as well it'll le lose let it will lose yet another little chunk of weight which is great the back still weighs an absolute ton it's lighter than it was when it started but it's definitely going to be a heavy guitar um, obviously there's the pickup holes to come out of there yet and I might take a little survey on whether we think I can remove any more material from the inside of there before I glue up but I am kind of resided to the fact that it is just going to be a heavy guitar for now but no overall pretty chuffed with the day's work as always if you've enjoyed this please do like and subscribe also do let me know if there's anything you have enjoyed about the video if there's anything that you think I could do to maybe make them a little bit more entertaining by all means tell me I'm boring and droning on too much I'm not that thin-skinned so until next time goodbye